Hey kids, welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 11, Selection Statements, Exercise Number 4. We have a choose your own adventure. I'm going to do Exercise B. Let's go ahead and jump in and see what we have to do. The painter is participating in a race and they need help navigating around the neighborhood to reach the finish line. We're going to import our Painter Plus class from our backpack. We've already done that. If you don't have it, you can click here and get a copy of the code. What we have to do is write the Marathon Painter class that can navigate around the neighborhood to reach the traffic cone. First, we're gonna write the Marathon Painter class to be a subclass of the Painter Plus class. We're gonna write the method move to south to have a painter object move east while it can move then turn right when it is able to move south. That's a word sandwich. Then we're gonna write another method called move to east to help a painter object move north while it can move, then turn right while it is able to move east. Another word sandwich. Finally, in our tester class, we are going to instantiate a marathon painter object and then call our move to south and move to east methods. We have some hints here. We're gonna to try to complete this without them. Let's take a look at our code. In our tester class here, we don't have too much. Importing our painter class, we have our painter plus. This is extending from our painter class. We have all those attributes and behaviors. And we also wrote two new methods. We have turn right, which is just three left turns, and our move fast, which can move as long as we can move. What we're gonna do now is first create the Marathon Painter class to be a subclass of the Painter class. Let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be named Marathon Painter. I think I have that spelled right. And we need our .java file extension. Let's go ahead and hit create. We're importing our painter class again, but we want this to be a subclass of the painter plus. That means that Marathon Painter has access to all the attributes and behaviors of painter plus, and it also has access to all the attributes and behaviors of the painter class. Just a smaller class, that's all. How do we write that? First, we need our public identifier. It's public because we want access across all of our classes. We need our class name to be the same as the file type. That is Marathon Painter. In order to get all those attributes or behaviors, we need to extend or get those. We use the keyword extends. And we're extending from Painter Plus. We need some curly braces to open and close our class. Well, this is now end of class. That is our first step. I like to write our constructors here. This is just giving us in a habit of doing it. It's going to be public. It's going to be called Marathon Painter. It has no arguments right now and nothing inside. Well, this is our constructor to make our object. Now we have to do number two here, which is write the move to south method. Let's create a space for this move to south method. And what this object is going to do, it's going to move east while it can. And if it can move south, it's going to. That means we are going to use our new friend the selection statement. And remember the first two we went over. Sequencing is just steps one right after another. Move, move, paint. We did iteration. That was our while statement. As long as it was true, it kept running. When it was false, it exited our method. Now we're going to use an if statement. So if it can do something, it's going to. This is the first half of what's eventually going to be our if else statements or two way selection statements we're going to do in a couple lessons. And that's really all we're going to do. While it can move east, move. If we can move south, turn right. 
let's take care of what we know. Let's create our method signature. First, we need our identifier for access, public. Our return type is going to be void. We just wanted to do the steps. What is our method signature name? It is move to south. We need some parentheses and some curly cues. This is going to be our end of method. Now inside here, the first thing I said was, wow, we can move east. We want to move. How do we write that? Well, we need our while statement, some parentheses, some curly cues. This is going to be our end of while. And while we can move, and remember under our methods here, can move can actually take a parameter. We can actually give it a argument. And we want it to check and see if it can move east. Remember, this has to be spelled exactly. This is a string literal with the quotes. So while we can move in the east direction, so it's going to keep running as long as we can move east, we are just going to move. Well, that's it. Now, within this while statement here, we want to say if we can move south, we want to go ahead and turn right to orient ourselves to go down. What's the anatomy of our if statement? We need an if, parentheses to hold our conditional, some curly braces to open and close the instructions inside. So that's if, we're gonna put our parentheses and our curly cues. This is going to be our end of if. And right now, we just wanna see if it can move this time to the south. So we're going to use that same can move inside though we're going to put south and because marathon painter is a subclass of painter plus we have access to those methods under painter plus turn right so we can tell it hey turn right before we get too crazy here let's go back to our tester method and see if we can get our object to create and run. First thing we need to do is to instantiate our object. How are we gonna do that? Well, this time it is a marathon painter. It's gonna be called roads. It's equal to a new marathon painter. No arguments from our constructor and a semicolon. First thing we want to do, let's just hit run and see if our object appears right here. Looking pretty good. Let's call our method roads.move to south. Now our object should move to here, turn around, orient itself towards the south. Let's go ahead and hit run. And it did. Looks pretty good. That's going to take care of number two here. Let's go ahead and write number three. Let's go back to our Marathon Painter. Clean up our code just a little. Look how nice this is with our curly cues. We know what means what. Let's go down here and write our next method. This is going to be called move to east method. Give ourselves some room here. First thing we need to do, this is going to be public to all of the classes. Void is going to be our return type because we just wanted to run the instructions and then exit. It's going to be called move to east, no parameters, and our curly cues. This is going to be our end of a method. Now in here, we want to have the object while we can move north to move north. But if it can move east, 
we want it to turn right and start moving. So that means our object, as it goes through and it faces east, if it finds a direction, it should be able to move east. We should run the next method, same thing. It'll go back and forth, turn east, back and forth, and then finally reach our cone. How do we put that in a code? Well, again, we need it to say while, we're gonna do our parentheses, our curly cues, end of while. And just like before, we gotta put a Boolean statement in there. We have our can move and it takes one parameter. That parameter is going to be our argument of north. So if it can move, and if it can move north, because we're down here, we want it to start moving up. And if by chance we can move east, we want it to turn right during that. That means within that same while statement, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna use our new friend if, because it can go that way we want to. If we need our parentheses, our curly cues again, this is going to be our end of if. And if we can move east, we are going to turn right. And remember, because we are a subclass of Painter Plus, we have access to that turn right method. Now, if it can move north, it's going to turn right. We still want it to move though, if it can move north. So outside of our if statement here, but inside of our while statement, we're going to have it move. So while we can move north, we're going to move north. But if we can turn east, we're going to turn right. And that is it. Looks pretty good. We have our end of class. Everything looks to be in order. Let's go ahead and finish up our code. Let's head back to our neighborhood runner. And down here, we need to tell it first that it can move to move. I think we can do our roads dot move fast method from our painter plus. Let's see if that takes us all the way down here. Let's hit run. That's pretty good. Now we need it to face back north so we can use our move to east method. That's gonna be one, two, turn to left. So we're gonna do a roads dot turn left. One more to get us in the right direction. Ooh. That should orient us going north. Let's speed it up just a little, hit run. There we are. Now we can call our new method roads dot move to east. Well, this should get us right up to here. Well, let's see if we're right. It did. That pretty much puts us back to our starting location. So that means we can do our move to south method again. Let's go roads dot move to south. That should run us right here. Well, let's hit run. Pretty good, now we just gotta rinse and repeat. We're gonna reuse that move fast method from our last lesson. So roads dot move fast. That should put us down there. We're gonna do two turn lefts and another roads dot turn left. And then we should be able to do our roads dot move to east method again. Should put us right there. Let's see if we're right. Well, look at that. We're so close, kids. We're going to rinse and repeat one more time. 
move fast method again. So again, rinse and repeat. We're going to do roads dot move fast. That should take us right there. Then we're going to have to orient ourselves in the right direction. So we're going to go roads dot turn left. That should face us down there. Let's see if that takes us to the right spot. Let's go ahead and hit run. In order to get us to the code, once we do, we'll move our move fast method to finish it up. It means we're going to need our roads dot move to east method. It's going to turn us and we're going to do our roads dot move fast. That should take us to the cone and complete this exercise. Let's go ahead and hit run. I think we have an error here. We forgot to turn. We're going to do roads dot turn right, I think. And that should orient us around. Let's see if we're right. This should complete it. And we did. Let's go ahead and test it. Make sure we completed everything we needed to do. And we succeeded on all four accounts. I know somebody's out there saying, hey, Mr. Rhodes, you should have went down and back up. And you could have certainly done that. That was just changing around one line of code. This was also a way we could have come. The important part is we are completing the move to east and move to south methods. Good job, kids. Key takeaway is understanding this idea of a selection statement or an if statement. This is a one-way selection statement. If true, do this. This is different from a while, which runs true until false. The if statement or selection statement is ultimately going to lead into a two-way selection statement of if else. But for right now, we are just using a if statement with a Boolean condition to test. The anatomy, we use the if keyword, parentheses. We have our curly braces to wrap the instructions. And then we execute whatever happens within those curly braces. And that's it. Hopefully this video helped you understand selection statements a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye. Bye.